Amyloid comes from the Latin word uh, amylum, which means starch. So it is a protein and it's an abnormal protein because it is abnormally folded. And so we call it a protein misfolding disorder. And by, by, by having this unique characteristic, it uh, tends to accumulate in the body in various organs. And by doing so, it damages and interferes with the function of various organs in the human body, most notably the heart. So the symptoms of amyloidosis are obviously based upon which organ is affected. Typically, there are two types of symptoms you see when the heart is affected. One is uh, heart failure, um, and heart failure symptoms are typically shortness of breath, fatigue, lack of energy, uh, and generalized weakness. And then uh, another uh, group of symptoms are related to irregular heartbeats or heart arrhythmias. And they can be, uh, they can result in palpitations, rapid heartbeat, irregular heartbeat, and sometimes it can result in fainting episodes uh, for the patient. Now, outside the heart, there are what we call extra cardiac symptoms. And the extra cardiac symptoms can be uh, related to involvement of the nervous system or the, or the gastrointestinal sim, uh, system. And these include drop in blood pressure, dizziness, lightheadedness. Um, it can result in erectile dysfunction in males. It can cause uh, diarrhea, constipation by, by affecting the, the, the GI tract. And it can also cause uh, kidney dysfunction by affecting the kidneys. Amyloidosis, um, depending upon the type of amyloidosis, um, the prevalence actually varies. So there are really two types of amyloidosis. So that is based upon the type of protein that is involved in the formation of amyloid. And amyloid, when it deposits in various organs, depending upon the protein, its prevalence varies. So there are two types of protein. One is called transthyretin. Um, we, it's, it's, it goes by the abbreviation TTR. And TTR protein is produced in the liver. And, uh, and, uh, and TTR uh, abnormalities are of two types. Uh, one is uh, genetically determined. So in other words, there is a genetic abnormality which drives its manifestation. The other kind of protein is called light chain protein. So, there are, so based upon the abbreviations we use to describe the two types of amyloidosis, we either call it ATTR, amyloid TTR, that's the TTR protein, or amyloid light chain, or AL amyloid. And, uh, and so the prevalence of AL amyloid, fortunately, is, is, is not that high. It's uh, one for every 100,000 Americans. So roughly about 5,000 patients a year are diagnosed uh, with uh, AL amyloidosis. ATTR amyloidosis, however, is much more prevalent. Uh, in the African-American population, about three to 4% of African-Americans uh, suffer from this condition. Among the Caucasians, especially white males over the age of 60, there is a prevalence of uh, about 10% in that population. In terms of diagnosis, there are a number of tests that we can do uh, to evaluate the heart. Um, uh, this includes uh, taking pictures of the heart using an uh, ultrasound. We call it an echocardiogram. And, and when we do an echocardiogram, there are some special techniques and tools we use, uh, something called strain imaging, which allows us to determine which wall of the heart is perhaps most affected. And then there's another imaging study uh, called a cardiac MRI, uh, where we can uh, not only understand how the different uh, walls of the heart are affected, we can also actually quantify where the deposit is and how much uh, damage uh, the heart muscle has suffered as a result of the deposit of uh, uh, amyloid protein. And then uh, there is a, a third imaging study, which we call, uh, call it a technetium PYP scan. Which, which allows us to discriminate patients who have ATTR amyloidosis from AL amyloidosis, which is important because the treatments are so different for these two conditions. Then there are blood tests, and, uh, and depending upon other organ systems uh, uh, involvement, we have other testing. For example, if the nerves are affected, we'll have to do some uh, special tests to evaluate the nervous system, um, including um, a nerve conduction velocity, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, other testing that will give us a little more detail 
how much of an uh, impact this disease has had on the nervous system.